guys, Saf coming at you with another Raid Shadow Legends video and we have a brand new rotation of the Cursed City of Sintranos. This is rotation three, the third version of the city that we've got. And of course, when every new rotation comes in, we go have a look at some of these most horrific stages that we have to beat and have a look at what kind of restrictions we are going to be facing. The actual floor configurations, the boss configurations, they will never change by the looks of it. The only thing that changes is the restrictions and where the keys are located. So you can see you have to go pretty deep into Plague Home to get one key over here. Soul Cross key is in this position and then Dead Rise is up here. So you're not going to get Amius unlocked probably in three days. It doesn't seem possible. So you can't really take advantage of that regearing unless you almost like do it in advance knowing which team you're going to build, which... You know, once you once you fight these stages, there's always something that pops up. You go, that didn't quite work out how I had planned. Now I have to spend some silver. Pretty much these early stages, the ones that normally cause players problems is Bommel. Now Blizzard is turning out to be one of those champions that pretty much we won't use in most cases. But when we need him, he's like such a god. And I think anyone who's got Blizzard will use them against Bommel because you can freeze the two little bombs that he spawns with his A3. Achak will burn, he will not freeze, so not very good. So you can use Blizzard for this to kind of mitigate that. And then just bring someone like someone like a Duchess or a Grush or, or, or like Panda maybe. Someone to basically keep your team alive and you should be able to beat that. That's how I did this. Um, this double boss here, Ice Go Kuldath and uh, Ice Golem. Pretty much like you could use Ronda. Someone with a bit of healing like Elva or, or Clod Beast Feeder. You absolutely can use those. There's not really any HP burns. I think you're just going to basically bulldoze this and kill them as quickly as you can. Now, up in the, the, the sort of dead rise, we kind of look to see Borgoth. Now, the way you beat Borgoth pretty much is anyone in regen who can poison. That's how I normally look at Borgoth. Automatically, we'll use this feature. I will go, okay, what kind of poisoners do I have? Well, we've got Steel Skull, not the, gra not the greatest poison. And then we've got King Galkaba. What kind of poisons does he do? So he only poisons based on the presence of buff removal. So he is not great. So poisons on Koldath here is going to be difficult. So in that essence, you're going to need to find someone who can like destroy maximum HP. We don't have anyone that can do that. So that's a problem. So he's going to be quite annoying. We're going to have to go down like the destroy set here. Because none of these champions are going to do this. Now, the good news is Green Warden Ruark, if you have him, very good. Because he's going to give you like blood shields type effects. This is where I'd be looking at emergency heal with someone like a shielder that can basically self-shield. Someone like a Virgis, if he's in this. He doesn't look like he is um, in this list at all. Now, um, someone like uh, White Dryad Nia to basically heal you. Very, very good as well. And if you can like put emergency heal on a White Dryad Nia with a shield... Then she's going to basically heal herself, which is then going to heal everyone from her passive. So this one will be quite tricky. There is access to Newt, so maybe you could just blast it. And obviously there is some like Ukos, there's Demithas. So there is ways to do it, but that one will be quite slow, I think, to be. He's always a bit of a tricky one. Uh, is there any other bosses here that we need to be mindful of? There's a Fire Knight here. This one should be okay if you've got a Farrakhan. You know, he will make this much easier. DPS options are a little bit limited, but we can, we got... Blizzard, we've got Ugo, right? Blizzard, not the not the hard boss, but that will work. So that is not so much of a problem. What about Plague Home then? Uh, let's do the Dark Fae. This one looks pretty straightforward. You know, if you've got Gwyneth from the Doom Tower, very good at this because she can just basically kill everyone and then heal everyone up. Won't trade on your counterattacks. Got Scylla for some decreased speed. There's Cold Hearts. Don't think anyone should be really struggling with that if you are an advanced progressed player. Uh, what do we got here? We got double. We got Borgoth, and we've got. Spider. So we've got Masha Led, Suzerain Katone. Uh, Blizzard would probably come in here again, freeze up the Spiderlings. This is what I'm saying about Blizzard. He's proven to be quite useful here. Ugi is not terrible either. Probably use something like a Stagnite. Uh, but again, we, we are looking for Poisoners for the, the Scarab King. What have we got? We've got plenty of Poisoners here. That's That should be much easier. Plenty of Poisons. We've got some Destroy Maximum HP as well. Val will be quite good. Doom Tower Legendary destroys maximum HP on his A3 by quite a significant margin. So that one looks okay. Uh, these Finite Hard here is... Finites are normally the other boss that I look for. Is there a difficult one? Cantra is quite good into this. An old fusion because you get heal reduction. Uh, this one looks a bit rough. I'm not going to lie. This one looks a little bit awkward. We do have Mighty Uko. But again, you're looking for you know heal reductions. Freezes. Is there any freezes here? Not really. Durandal, maybe. So you're probably going to have to go the, like a Vizier route with Cantra. Uh, that will be quite tricky. Now, let's talk about 
the soul cross regions, right? The soul cross regions are getting stupid to the point where I think this is this rotation is going to frustrate a lot of people. Uh, S8, what are they thinking? If you've got Alsgore, I will say Alsgore makes S8 probably much easier, even to the point where you might find it trivial if you do a lot of soul cross. But look at the, like, what are they thinking? There's a more two on wave two on this wave. And the problem that I have with it is not that it's difficult, it's look at everything it blocks. You cannot get to all of Soul Cross unless you beat S8, which is, for a lot of people, going to be difficult. The MVP of this is going to be Spider because he's the able to place decreased defense on 100% chance. It's a long cooldown, but you're basically going to have to use that to try and one-shot people in the waves that are going to cause problems. I think it starts with, like, double Ray. So really, you absolutely have to take out those rays, otherwise you're going to get annihilated by her ability to strip buffs and freeze and control you. Uh, you're probably going to have to use stuff like, you know, AoE Provoke, which is, you know, single target provoke here, or you're going to have to use some like missionary here that can do another single target, kind of decrease speed. These champions are going to be very useful. You might have to bring like a Jamasa for a revive. You could also go for a Re in the Conjurer. It's a single target revive, just depends what you prefer. But yeah, I'm probably going to have to try and use my bar off the blood soaked and just try to absolutely nuke targets with his abilities. The only good thing is they're a bit slower here, but I would, I, I really just need to like highlight to player him. Like it's not, you need to be a little bit less restrictive here, right? You, you have basically given us, what is it? One, two, pretty much like four viable champions if you don't have Alsgore. It's so, so horrible. Put it with like, S7 here, right? Where I can go through the Awakened stage to get there or I can go through S7. Give me a choice. Don't put these types of restrictions right on the doorstep of all of this because the rest of this stuff, this is going to be so much easier for me, right? These, I can use Torment here. Torment will make this quite trivial. S10. I've got Fortus. Reworked Fortus. Double Whisper will make it quite trivial. Even something like Soul Cross 17, which is normally a, a, quite a difficult one for people as well. This will be okay because we've got access to people like Crutraxa if you've got her. Um, you can bring some multi-hitters like Dark Kale, right? So you, what you're looking for here is multi-hitters who have a heal reduction or a freeze. Now, there's not a lot of freezes here, but there is Durandil. I'm actually planning on not going the freeze route. I'm going to go for like this type of route here. I'm going to take these champions and then I'm going to bring a, a decreased speed. Old Gruckus, if you have it, will be very valuable here. Might be worth leveling up in the current champion training tournament. I will probably go Countess Lix just because I have a blessing on that champion with Brimstone. And then I'm going to front it up with something like a Duchess. You could use a Mithrala as well. Absolutely viable. Now, Faultless Defense only works if you have increased defense, but you can make a Faultless Defense Mithrala. She will be able to give you five extra stacks, and that could be absolutely critical if you don't have all these multi-hitters. And then I'm going to finish it off with Marinix. So I do have here sort of like mostly legendary champions. I do have a Void Legendary, but this is how I'm going to approach it. I should be able to knock them down. Uh, I will be using Duchess, though, because she's just brilliant at this. I will be knocking them down and then hopefully putting decreased speed, heal reduction, and just trying to keep the bosses, trying to beat the boss up during his windows rather than trying to freeze his turn meter because there's just not enough, unless you have like six Durandals, there's just not enough freeze for that. But yeah, this S8 looks awful. Uh, the other ones to note, S19, Gwyneth will be pretty big here because Gwyneth's healing output and damage output is very good, but it was it's going to be difficult. The other thing, I think I don't know if this is going to trigger the Tarasis A2 because normally you don't want the Tarasis to take a turn. That might be good to do that. Um, yeah, this one looks quite tricky. I probably, after last month, spending hours upon hours upon hours trying to do S19, will not do this. I don't think it's worth my sanity. But you do have access to things like Royal Guard. Skuramis will be excellent for Wave 3 because you'll be able to reduce the Veil duration on the... Yumiko. The biggest problem with Wave 3 is you cannot control the Yumiko when the Veil is out, so you want to try and get rid of that Veil, so Skiramis could come in and absolutely do a wonderful job. Also HP based, also has stuns in his abilities, so Provoke as well, so Skiramis looks an absolute legit MVP for this. Um, yeah, so we'll have to see how this goes, but uh, it looks a bit more accessible than last rotation. S20 looks much better, you know, if you've got the Fusions, Uge, Dreng, Blizzard, free logging rush, right? This is about a free to play Hoskerel. Hoskerel will be very, very good here. Hoskerel is one of the best stun champions in the game. So you can basically build pretty close to a free to play team for this. These are all previous fusions or logging champions. 
Um, you can also go Burgoth if you want to. There's a Valkyrie. You can go more Whale if you get the Nurgigante Archer. So S20 compared to last season looks better. S21, double Akimton. Will be very, very good. Akimton in stun set with Warmaster. And if you do the Duracell Bunny route, which is quite a cool... It's kind of a cool way to do it. I, I don't know if it's going to work. But because of the way that Hexblood works, Hexblood is coded as an AoE effect. So when one poison activates on one enemy, all other hexed enemies take damage equal to that one poison. But it's considered direct damage on an AoE, which means if you have four pieces of Rathalos, every single time a poison will activate, it's going to activate the Rathalos turn meter bonus to give you 20% speed boost, right? Because it attacks four enemies, 20% speed boost. If you then put him into War Master, you will do damage. And if you put him in a stun set, you will also be able to proc Leech, which gives you healing and crowd control because every time a poison activates, it gives you stun. So you could use one in Rathalos, one in stun set. If you have got lucky and you've been able to get some Rathalos accessories, if you can get two accessories, you can build four pieces of Rathalos, four pieces of stun set, and Akintum will absolutely annihilate this wave because they will not be able to take a turn once you get the Hex and Poisons out. If you just support it with like a Romantu, maybe you put a Torment in there, this should be much easier. Um, let's just talk about then this last one here, uh, which is the double boss for Finite. The finite ones are the hardest ones in Soulcross because it's just about getting the stack counter down. And we know also know that the bosses, the bosses in Soulcross are quite tricky. But here it's going to be a little bit more difficult because we don't have counterattacks like we did before. We do we have any ally attacks? That's kind of like what you want to know. Okay, well, we got Creela. So Creela should be fine. So we could bring Creela in with maybe a Islin for a counterattack. The key here is always kill the Spiderlings, then kill the Frost Queen. So you absolutely need to have a HP burn. If you don't have a burn, you're going to get frozen to death constantly. And we have plenty of burns here. So this should be okay for players as well. So pretty much all of this, you know, there's some rough stages. Like S13 is an absolute skip for me. I do not want to fight this. This looks awful. So S13 is an absolute skip. S14, I mean, I think it's okay for me. We can use like a drop defense. We've got healing. We've got double control damage. We've got Gaius bombs for control and damage. We've also got this. There's plenty of options. I can bring Foley. It feels okay, um, but I'm skipping S13. I'm, I, I've decided now based on the, my experience last rotation, I'm targeting the mythical charms. I'm targeting like the gear and the like the, the this 1000 coins in this is very valuable. And then I will just fill up what I can. I'm not chasing the 100. It's just impossible. It's not good for your sanity. It's just not. Uh, Sand Devil. This one looks like it's going to be a bit of a slow grind. Uh, but there's a lot of support healing here, right? If you went for the Alatrian, that's a good shield defense um, buff there. If you bring a Curing Elva, will be very valuable. Oella, Past Fusion. Teodor. Somehow I got a five-star Teodor. I don't know when that happened. Uh, so you've got plenty of options here. Killing it will be hard. Killing it will be the challenge because... You just don't have, like, normally it's killing it with burns. Drain is going to be the one you're going to have to do it with. It's going to take you a while. But that should be okay if you've got some support. And then Iron Twins. Again, all you need to do for Iron Twins is bring decreased speed. Someone like a Panda. Someone like a Tuomasia. And just slow him down. When he's got decreased speed, he won't fill his turn meter when you buff. And then bring loads of support and just out-tank his damage. Someone like a Duchess would be very good. Someone like a someone like a Steel Skull, right? Some healing, some shielding. We could also bring people like Tagoa. They can get some heals. Look, there's some revives there. Uh, it's not so bad. Uh, not the best, but not so bad. You know, people who can shield, increase defense, block debuff. Someone like Achak for that strengthen buff. Strengthen buff here. Hippo would be quite good if you want to look at the free-to-play options. Continuous heals. If you've got a Teela, great. That's very good. It's going to give you some continuous healing. Uh, so that's how you're going to beat him. Just basically decrease speed, slow it down, and just try to out-survive him, and he will eventually fall. Um, let's talk about Amius then, just to close out the video. This is the last main thing. Now, whenever we approach Amius, the first thing I always look for is, have we got heal reduction? And it's looking a bit grim. We've got Ironclad that can do, a, what is it, 30, 40% chance? It's not great. We've got a, a, a Scion. Cyan will do a 100% chance on three turns, so it might be the best option. 
Uh, we've got Minaya, could be a good healer here, but it is on a long cooldown. It's a three turn cooldown and it requires legendary books. We've got a Mortu Macab A1, so maybe probably Mortu is going to be the best one here because he's HP based. You're going to get that big nuke with Peril. It's not 100%, but it is pretty good. What is it? 70%, 85%, 90% when you put Sniper on it. It's a pretty good chance. So that's the first thing we're going to do. And then, to be honest, I think the best answer to this guy is just to try and kill him as quickly as you can. Bring people like maybe you set up a big 200% hit with Rathalos to try and break him. Maybe you bring something like a Seer and just A1 it over and over again, right? Get some extra turns, try and kill it as quickly as possible. Try and find someone who has got lots of Awakening now that we got all these stats and just try and bulldoze your way through it. Probably the best tank is going to be interesting to see is the Taunt, will it override the A1? That'll be the interesting test here because the A1 will always target the lowest HP, but will Taunt override it, which if it does, this is excellent. This is really good because when you transition, I don't think he can twist Taunt. I don't think he can twist Unkillable, right? So he can't take them away. He will ignore the Unkillable. That is the only other thing. Uh, I think his passive here ignores Unkillable, which is frustrating. So he will probably just die. But I mean, at least you can force it, I guess. Maybe it's not as good as I thought it was. It's always going to be tricky here, but if you can build like a super tanky, you know, high star rating, I mean, you can go for someone like an Artak. Artak might be not a bad idea because he will um, gain some bonus defense here to try and keep him alive. So then we're going back into the usual strategy. In terms of a one-shot one strategy, you can use Tarichka if you have Taras and Marichka. It might work. There are other champions in here, like um, some like crazy champions i think rathos maybe if you can set him up and keep him alive it's quite difficult though because it takes a while to ramp him up but i guess let's just see how it goes i'm actually going to be speed running to try and complete this because this is going to be the biggest barrier for me i want to try and do this during the free regearing event but you can see i've already done my eight keys today i've got straight into plague home so i've got it i'm gonna go probably p3 p4 24 6 20 21 ice golem so that will take me and an four. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can get to S4 tomorrow or on reset. That gives me about three days of free regearing left. And then basically the day after that, which is two days, I can get to S8. So I've got two days to try and beat this stage. I'm going to absolutely level a spider right now in champion training tournament because I think he's going to be absolutely essential if you want any chance to do it, even with an Alsgore, because you need the decreased defense to be able to take out the Mortu Macab very quickly. And I will probably just try and use a, a nuke bar off the Blood Soak to see if I can just kill one target quickly, cycle and stay alive and kill the next target. That is the rotation. I will obviously try and cover specific stages as I come across them. If I find any sort of neat strategies to beat things, if, if my community is saying I'm really stuck at this one, how do I beat it? Um, and of course, I will do a video on Amius, but my plan is not to rush to Amius this time, it's to get S8 done. Once S8 is done, then I will probably focus back towards Amius because most of this stuff I'm far less stressed about, apart from 19 and a couple of the other ones. It's S8 that's going to be the biggest burden and blocker for, I think, pretty much 95% of players. Even like endgame players, like I've, I've talked to a few of them, if they don't have Alsgore, they're like, this looks like it's just going to be horrific and I'm really not enthused about it. Um, I will say, player, can we just check some of these restrictions? I know that it's designed to make us hate the game, but please, a little bit. Just just, just once, a little bit better. Um, so there you go, guys. Let me know in the comments below what stages are you particularly stuck on. If there is a particular stage that you need some advice and guidance on now that you've had a look at this rotation, ping me in the comments below. I will keep an eye on all the comments. If there are specific stages that I can do a guide on, I will do so. But thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.